need for Tom to start everything up. So good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is James Stack, and I'd like to welcome you to the meeting of the Finance and Property Committee uh, on February 3rd, 2015, the floor, first floor conference room. Item one is called, called Meeting to Order. Item two is an application for a secondhand article dealer license filed by ECO ATM Incorporated doing business as ECO ATM for the premises at 555 West Grand Avenue. Is there anyone here to represent them? Okay, let's let's move on. We'll do item three and we'll come back to two as necessary. We'll make note of that up. I suspect some of the principals might be upstairs. You might be able to tell us a little bit more um, about that. Yeah, staff. Yeah, Tim, Tim and Sue are up there, right? Yeah, city staff might be able to tell us a little bit more. Okay, so item number three is an application for a Class B liquor and beer license filed by Johnny's LLC, Joshua the Trone agent, doing business as Johnny's for the premises at 2610 8th Street South. And Josh and Cheryl? Yep. Okay, I have your application. Uh, Shane gave it to me just uh, a little bit ago. Uh, he tells me everything is in order. Are you ready to go? Just about. Yep. We're waiting on some uh, our uh, contract to purchase. Has okay. to be signed yet from everybody. All right. Um, but everything else is right on schedule to start. Okay. You're taking this over to the showers? Yes. Is it? Okay. Yep. All right. I wish you the best. Thank you. And, uh, you know, have you ever been in business before? No. Uh, no? She's been in the bar business for a long time. And okay. My dad owns business, so. Okay. I got plenty of people behind us. So. That's good. You need that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Big undertaking with a full time job. Oh, it is. Yeah. You work at the uh, highway department. Yep. Yeah. Right. Work with Chris Stoplet. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good friend of mine, so. I uh, entertain a motion then to approve the application for the Johnny's for the premises at 2610 A Street South. I motion to approve the application. And I'll second it. So motion and second to approve the application for the liquor, license, uh, liquor and beer license filed by Johnny's. Any uh, other comments by anyone? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Ocean carriers. Okay, you're all set. Thank you much for coming in. Well, thank you. And any questions, just talk with Shane if something should come up. All right? Okay, have a good evening now. Thank you. Unless you want to stay. <laughs> <laughs> you guys got under control. Right? Oh, okay. yeah. Well, the best we can. Thank that, you. That door might be locked. Oh, no, you can get out there. Okay. You can go out and then go to your right. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Okay. Item number four is a re uh, here, I'll give you this to go with your minutes. Thank you. Item four is a request from Fire Chief Dave Kirkman to review and approve bids for the replacement of CV1 Old Utility 3, which is known as a Fire Chief's vehicle. Okay. Uh, I'll start out by um, passing out that point. Um, the, uh, our FDAS for our fire vehicles, which is our depreciation account. Mm -hmm. um, you'll see that uh, this year we had budgeted $36,000 uh, for that replacement. Um, as of uh, on December, excuse me, on January 21st, I put out for bid, I actually hand delivered. Um, um, and if you look at 2.1 on that, um, what we were actually looking for for that vehicle, I hand delivered to um, all of the local dealerships that would meet that criteria in the city of Wisconsin Rapids. Um, uh, excuse me, Chief, when you said, yep. said 2.1? 2.1 on the, on the contract. Oh, okay. On there, and I can, I can, I can go through it. Four-wheel drive may show all-wheel drive options pricing, ABS brakes, four-cylinder engine um, may show six-cylinder, but I wanted to go with a four-cylinder just to the fact that it's going to be my vehicle, using it mainly for going back and forth to, to different type of meetings. Didn't need anything that uh, was larger than that, what was looking for the fuel efficiency. Okay. Uh, air conditioning, um, automatic transmission, power steering, cruise control, AM, FM radio, rubber floor mats, uh, five passenger seating minimum, 
Uh, the reason for that is it could potentially be used in the future if they're going to a conference, then they could utilize my vehicle, they're not taking an emergency vehicle out of service. Right. And then red and white uh, for colors, one of those two colors. Um, had conversations with, uh, with uh, Tim this morning in regards to it, uh, due to the fact that after I had sent them out, um, they were due yesterday at 4.30. I opened them this morning. We had only received one. Um, and I'll pass that out. Come on, you have one. Me too. Two that way. And two that way. Uh, came to, um, it was from, um, it was a 2015 Explorer four-door um, from Rapids Ford, um, and it came to 28-877-44. Um, I would have liked to have seen additional ones come from the community, kind of disappointed that we didn't receive additional, uh, but I think, I think we did our due diligence, and honestly, I would feel poorly for Rapids Ford, who actually did do the due diligence and turned it in. So uh, my recommendation would be that we would go with the, uh, the 2015 Explorer uh, for the 28-877-44, which um, I'll mark to the finance director, even came under budget. It's the first time for everybody. <laughs> 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 Any questions from anyone present on this? And then um, the uh, what we'd be getting rid of is a 2002 Dodge van that's been hit by hail twice, and we would be selling that on the Wisconsin surplus, and that would go into the general fund. Okay. I don't know if we'll get much for it, but <laughs> six sure. bucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. And this was I saw that this was in the budget for the year, so this was anticipated. Yep. Okay. And uh, anyone else have any questions on this purchase? All right. I make a motion to approve the request from Fire Chief Kirkman to approve the bid for the new vehicle in the amount of $28,877.44 and trade in of the or sale of the old vehicle. Do you have to put anything in there in regards to the applicable state title and plate or not? That in there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, cool. taxes on there, but we don't pay taxes. So. Right. Motion. Uh, I second that. Okay. Motion made and second to approve the chief's request for a new vehicle. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed. Those opposed none. So motion carries. So chief, you're all set. Okay, thank you. Uh, yep. Just give us a call when we get a ride in. Okay. We'll do that. All right. <laughs> Tim, are you you good night, Chief. Yep. Do you have anything for item two, which is the across the street, the pond? No. Nope. No. Okay. Maybe Seward, perhaps. We had no one here when we first started. Okay, yeah, I'm not, I think, okay. Usually Shane deals with those or, yeah, but he didn't mention anything to me other than, you know. Okay, I, I, okay. I don't know much about it, so. All right, uh, okay. so, uh, we'll wait till the others are able to join us. I don't know. Okay, we'll move on to item number five, which is to apply for a stewardship grant and trace transportation alternatives grant to help fund the East Riverbank Trail. Mr. Pikestead. Yes. Um, so we've got a couple of documents that were passed around here. The East River Bank Trail is shown on the first page, the first aerial map that's there. Uh, it runs from uh, Riverview, Riverwood Lane by Daly Avenue and runs along the East River Bank up to uh, East Jackson, or actually East Grand Avenue, excuse me. And so with the potential cost of that project, Depending on the sorts of things that could go into it, um, it, the estimated cost is kind of bouncing around potentially nine hundred thousand dollars. 
And so we're looking at these two grant alternatives to uh, help fund that project. Um, the other document that I handed out is just a kind of a summary of what those grants are. Um, I can't say that there's no strings attached, but if we are awarded money, that at that time there is no penalty to decline the money. There's, you know, the city has that option to do that at that time. Um, to say that, okay, we've applied for the grant, we're awarded so much money. If the city's plans change in that time period, that the city can decline accepting those funds. Okay. And, uh, so it, it funds funds different things, uh, the trail itself, uh, any amenities along the trail, benches, uh, overlooks, lighting, railing, fishing piers, those sorts of things. Okay. Now, question: What? Uh, how will the trail? The trail, I take it, will utilize in a sense some of the sidewalk along third street right correct and then you'll delineate on second street south an area that is part of the trail you won't cut into the river bank or anything like that or um, do you anticipate i think that it would be at least looked at as as part of the you know where there's enough width to okay. allow a trail yeah that we would, we would utilize, utilize the park for that okay so you'll be used a lot utilizing both existing features that work into the plan as well as adding something to it as, as needed and appropriate. Correct. Okay. All right. Yes. Okay. You said that the total cost of the project may be 900000 Could be. For, yeah. For the trail. For the trail and the whole thing. And then you can say we can apply up to 50% up to 200000 what, what amount are we going to be writing the grant for, or can we put it kind of like in an itemized list that's saying that we want to do part of it, or, you know, depends, you know we're going to write a $400,000 grant, yeah, you know, can, with the, the key maybe elements that we know we're going to do, and then the other parts of that maybe up to full 900000 that we can budget for and do at a later date, or, you know, so that, yeah, I just want to, if we're committing, by applying for the grant, we're committing to the whole 900000 right. I've run into that with the EDA grant where all of a sudden you put a budget figure in and it's like, even though they're only funding a certain percentage, now you have to spend that 900000 So I was just curious. So, so there's a couple alternatives here by applying for both of the, the grant funds okay. that you can match federal to state money. Mm -hmm. And so with the stewardship grant, there's they go through a whole bunch of different funding sources, some of which is federal and some of which is state. And they, you can pick and choose depending on what you want to use it for. Um, and so it can piggyback along with the other grant program. Uh, the one thing with the, the stewardship grant is that you can use it as a planning grant. So it can help fund some of the design, you know, or, or some of the uh, grant application. And it's, it's good for um, several years. They'll That's keep postponing it on oh. request. Okay. So it's not, you're not there's no sunset date. On the stewardship, okay. The TAP program, transportation alternatives program, that's much more intensive, similar to the safe routes to school that we're going through now. <laughs> and um, however, the potential there is much more money because it's eighty twenty, which would make because that's eighty twenty was the a full thing. Okay. It's based. The max is based upon the competition and the available funding that's okay. out there. There's no set match. So the stewardship, we can. Yeah, so then we can postpone it so as we acquire funds for either through the budget or other sources that we can yeah. kind of go in and then it's kind of connects kind of into right, the next agenda item where we put that right. plan together and then come up with the plan of how we're going to... If we're aware if we're of okay. money with the TAP grant, mm -hmm. that that construction wouldn't be until 2018. So mm -hmm. we've got a yeah, so okay. to that perk. Yeah, okay. Huh. Lay this out. All right, cool. So uh, at this point in time, you're looking at nine hundred thousand dollars. Is that correct? Yeah, it's kind of for the trail. It's kind of an all-inclusive kind of full figures and you know, anything that we might want to include in there. All right. And particularly because it's somewhat discretionary, right? Yeah. I mean, if we apply for the trail, those dollars can be if we include other priorities in the application. Mm -hmm. Those also can receive funding as a part of the proceeds, right? Right. Okay. Okay. Now the so nine hundred thousand dollars is that total cost 
for the city or total cost, including grants and other monies that may be received? That's total cost for the project. For the project. So, okay. you know, if we get, you know, you can potentially get almost the whole thing paid for. Yeah, so if you got the tap, 80% of it, 900000 would be funded. If you didn't get the tap, 200000 of the 900000 would be funded. If you got both, then you can use the stewardship grant as the local match. Right. It probably wouldn't cost you anything. So what you're saying is the yeah. the DNR stewardship grant we put in two hundred thousand, mm -hmm. leaving seven hundred. Right. And then eighty percent of seven hundred would be five hundred and sixty thousand. Well, you the eighty if you got the tap, you did eighty percent federal would be at the nine hundred thousand. Nine hundred. So and then okay. for the twenty percent local funding, if uh -huh. you were also rewarded the. Stewardship grant that two hundred thousand would go towards a local match, and any residual would be the city's obligation. Okay, as I understand it. But, okay, you know, so obviously, and then any guesstimate on any city participation at this point in time, or is it all just that we know that we're looking at a nine hundred thousand dollar project with some assets available to us outside the city? Right, and I think this is just to kind of apply for these grants okay. and explore different funding opportunities. And then, obviously, as we get word on these grants, that we'll you know, obviously we'll probably come back in through the budget okay. process or other and kind of come up with a uh, an overall yep. plan, project okay. plan that we approve, and then also the funding side of it too, okay. and depending on how these come out. Which I guess right. would be the best way to. And I think there is was alluded to they're, they're very much connected the two agenda items because it's in chicken or the egg right if you you can't do the program if you don't have the financing Correct. you can do all the design in the world and pretty pictures and not be able to do it until you get the funding right. so I think part of um, the exercise is and maybe Joe mentioned this I apologize coming from upstairs uh, the the fact that as time goes on the likelihood of these programs containing the dollars they've got today is right this is pretty slim I mean we know the state budget situation and other things that these pots of money are going to continue to shrink so knowing that we're going to do something whether mm -hmm. it's as simple as the railing on the river wall or river wall enhancements or, or any other 10 other project things to have the dollars committed to help us do those things will help us get our yep. list done sooner so I think that was kind of why when we had talked about you know it seems like a lot of things all at once but it's all based again around these and I don't want to the word grant gets used in and unfortunately it's got some negative connotations I think in these situations it's it's got a lot more positive possibilities than what other times people like St. Francis School you know that's an example of one that was Joe saw that firsthand with Dave working on that for years you know with the sidewalks you know these grants while there's still strings if we can use the ones that are less less uh, you know, less committing and and give us some discretion to spend money. So if it's not the East River Bank Trail that we decide to do at some point, but we've got $900,000 worth of projects over here, we can still do them without losing the funding is probably the point, especially okay. if it's a 2018 construction. All right. Any questions from the older and present? Tom, Andy, Scott? No, sounds good. Okay. What amount of money have we spent on the existing trail system? I mean, is this nine? You know, nine hundred thousand, and this is a stretch that's leading from mm -hmm. just—is uh, it all the way up to Str uh, Strawberry? You know, this section of trail would be from East Grand down to uh, Riverwood Lane, tie back into First Street. So, okay, and then this would also go under the expressway. Is that? Yeah, that's, that's preliminarily what we're looking at. Okay, I just want to see—is this? amount of money in line with what we spent for similar stretches or is there any reason that would drive up the cost? I would assume going under the expressway is going to drive up the cost. Yeah, a little some, bit. Um, some some, some, some other things, things if, you know, if you look at fishing fears or lighting along certain stretches of the trail, those sorts of things will uh, drive add, the cost yeah. over. Sure. Is this, does the grant, is it like force account work, contract work, or is, uh, do you know that I know when we did the stuff up by where the old East High Pool, I think the city did some work. I think it's that. primarily a contract work. And one other question then, Joe. This map you're doing, uh, which areas again? From here down by the uh, Daly Avenue? Yep, so the red line. As far up as? East Grant. Okay, so the $900,000 takes us to East Grant. Correct. Okay, Daly Avenue to East Grant. 
I guess the only thing that makes me nervous about it is along the, the parkway there by the old Elks. If we're going to be cutting into, you know, doing doing something with the gradient there and, and cutting out a portion of that green grass area, because obviously that's where we do. Everybody goes down and sits there for the Independence Day celebration. So anything that right. you do to impact that area would seem to me to be we'd want to make a serious consideration if we want to go into there or if we'd want to do, say, a sidewalk at the top like is already existing closer to the Elks, mm -hmm. which to me I think would probably be more appropriate in my opinion, but, yep. Well, and I think that's going to be addressed as the next yeah, item on the same. agenda is is, okay. is is that landscape architect planner. Yeah. You know, all these things are really, <laughs> they're really just dreams by any of our expertise at this point, just because we don't know what's feasible and even alternatives. If it's if it's right. it saves us fifty grand by doing it this other way, we're probably going to think strongly about doing the alternative. Um, but that's a, that's a good point. I mean, I think as we communicate this externally about, oh, what did you guys decide in that meeting you're going to spend 900000 out for the trail? And, well, hold up. No, we don't even know what to do with the trail. You know, it might spend 900000 of state and federal money, okay, with some, some local match. But, you know, theoretically, we have to submit a project to right. receive funding. Well, right. what's in the scope? We may not even get it. Yeah. Like, well, well so even that element, but even just, you know, are we going to get, you know, we need to submit a project that we've got on the, that's been identified on our route network. Um, you know, for consideration by the state for funding. Okay. okay. Any other questions, comments? Okay, I'd make a motion then to approve the request to apply for a stewardship grant and transportation alternative grant to help fund the East Riverbank Trail. Is there a second? A second. Motion made and seconded to approve the request. Is there any further discussion at all? Mayor? Joe, do you want to add and maybe ask them to include in their motion um, Eastside Riverbank Trail and other East Riverbank improvements? That way it gives you some flexibility in writing the grant. Would you be amenable to maybe including sure. that, recognizing what we just discussed, that maybe yeah. it's not just or maybe it's not the trail, you know, or part of the entire system. So maybe it's mm -hmm. additional. Uh, East River, the East River Bank Trail and Enhancements. I'll just we'll put in and enhancements. There. I think that's yeah. Any other questions, comments? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. All right. Item number six is to pursue a request for proposals for the potential hiring of a landscape architect planner for the design of riverfront enhancements. Okay, is that you, Joe? Yeah, that's it's me as well. Okay. Um, so, kind of taking a look at all the projects that are going on the, the aerial maps, we've got the the Overlook project, and the, the um, River Wall Railing project that we had brought before property finance uh, sometime in 2014 mm -hmm. brought before this committee um, so we've got that project kind of sitting out there um, we've got some minor sidewalk modifications to our existing trail network um, in veterans park and up by beach and well, north of beach and park and having just finished the first tree reconstruction we've got the east river bank path and on the horizon, um, what we were looking at is trying to come up with, with some way of taking a step back and take, a, take more of a uh, in-depth look at you know, the overall plan, kind of a comprehensive look at what are we, what are we trying to do with all of these projects that are kind of sitting out there in the next few years. You know, how, does the, how does the city want them to look? How does, you know, which ones are projects that are still worth doing. Um, so the request is to go out for um, request for proposals to get a, some sort of architect or slash planner, some firm that can take a look at this um, 
this area for us, this East Riverbank corridor, uh, and um, try to put some put some recommendations for it that are that, that the city can grasp on to. All right. Was this placed in your budget for 2015? It was not. No. It was not. Okay. How would you propose funding it? Uh, at this time, I'm I'm unaware of how much the the uh, Cost might be for the okay. services, um, and so the intent was to that we could go out for proposals and see what might come back, and okay. then take a look at what we might have available in other accounts or that, that the city might have sure. to fund this, and if it's of importance. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, when the proposals come back, and if there's a recommendation to the finance committee, that would come with also a funded recommendation. Okay. At that point, it's it's it's. Hubble in the in the TIF district, which this is all, all these projects are located in. There's in the, the, the project plan. There is money designated, not designated, but you can use monies from the TIF okay. to fund planning type services. So depending on what, what we're talking about for a mile, that it can be funded by the TIF or other sources. But until we know what exactly the amount is, but okay. there will be a future. Yeah. So at this at this point in time, then you'll be uh, doing a request for proposals, which would be a part of your working budget for 2015. Correct. Mm -hmm. So there would be money in there for things like this already built mm -hmm. in consideration. Okay. So is that for correct? staff time, time to yeah. be staff time. Yeah. 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 Because at this point, it's it's just going to be your your time to develop it, right. mm -hmm. submit it. Okay. All right. All right. So. All right. Um, any questions from anyone else? Okay, I'd make a motion then to uh, grant the request to pursue the request for proposals for the potential hiring of a landscape architect, planner for design for the design of riverfront enhancements. And this will be from Daly Avenue, how far north? I would say all the way to the um, dam, the Legion Park. Okay. Yeah. All right. So Daly Avenue to Lincoln Park. In case there's some river uh, railing pieces in there, or, you know. One thought was, I forgot to mention, but uh, we also have First Street North being reconstructed, and so there's there's also uh, with the reconstruction of that uh, roadway leading up towards Beer and that uh, the continuation of the trail. At least consideration to be done at that time with the, with the design of those streets. Um, so uh, the map shows the corridor extending up to Buren, but um, the concepts that come from the, uh, the potential study uh, can certainly be carried through that. Okay. Legion Park. And uh, Legion Park, uh, then we want to go to Strawberry. We could, I mean, either, either way, I mean, we could. Because if we, if we end at Legion Park, then we would have to come back later to do that portion from Legion Park to Strawberry Lane. Is that correct? Yeah. Especially if there's a railroad crossing in there that we might want to include. Yeah, that's a good point, Jim. If we wanted to include something like that in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that, that way we get, well, it, as a request for proposal goes out, you can indicate two scenarios up to Legion Park and Legion and from Daly to Legion and Daly to the uh, Buren uh, trail connection at Strawberry. Is that something you'd like to work with? Yeah. So give you a little flexibility on the council later uh, and Tim with the dollars as we look at things. Got it. So we'll do Daly Avenue to um, the connection with the future beer and trail. Any other questions, comments? Did I make a motion to pursue the request? Four proposals for potential hiring of a landscape architect planner for the design of riverfront enhancements from Daly Avenue to let's call that the northern city limits with Karen. 
second. Is that agreeable to all? I think it'll just give all of us a little bit of a better working knowledge of what's feasible. Um, at Park and Rec, <coughs> excuse me, we talked about this last Wednesday. Uh, to what extent um, does the city have a plan to take what's already been planned? You know, we've got the waterfront plan that right, identifies all these really cool ideas, but to what extent are they really feasible? You know, mm -hmm. on our waterfront, there's grades, there's um, other environmental factors that are that are at play, and I don't think any one of us, um, you know, engineering might have some capacity, but they're not designers. Uh, they don't also know a lot about landscaping. Maybe Joe personally does, or somebody that our person does, but there isn't a lot of like urban urban landscaping, urban planning you know, capacity, and that's you no know, knock to anybody. But I think you know, to rely on some experts to give us a little bit of, of what you know we're we're lacking maybe would be mm -hmm. a benefit to us as we move forward along the waterfront. There's times when you you can do things in house, and then there are times when you need to contract the service. So. All right. Uh, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Now, Mayor uh, Tim didn't have anything, but item number two I went over at this point. Item two is the second-hand article dealer license, mm. and I didn't get anything for Shane before I came in. Do you know if Sue will have something? Uh, the owner Eco ATM. Oh, so that's the owner. Of, yeah, I know. I think I know what that is. So that's the mall. Right. That's the mall. Um, and we were wondering. And I think what it is, I've seen it. It's, it's a. a it looks like an ATM, phones. right? It says Eco ATM. But yeah, they take cell phones and battery. You know, just things that are not landfillable, and they must find a new home for them, a new life oh. for them. So it's it's right in the food court. Yeah. In the mall. If that's what you're yeah. Talking. I think it's just you basically go from this. You, Type in there. I've got this type of phone or whatever. And if you want rid of the thing, you or a phone charger, or whatever the case may be, and you put it in there, and it gives you X amount of dollars value for yeah. the phone. And, I don't know if it's phones for, or something. Phones yeah. for soldiers program or something. But yeah, that's okay. what it is. It, you can, it caught me too, but after I put it together, it's that machine because well, it's I, in fact they must be finding another source, so that's why they must fall under our second hand. Ordinance that yeah, or maybe there. they maybe they sell it to a reclamation center or something. Yeah. I don't know. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we can come back to this. Should we get Sue or someone else and maybe some additional information? Okay. At this time, then we'll go to item seven, which is re review and approve applying for the Wisconsin DNR's Urban Nonpoint Source and Stormwater Management Grant. What areas do we need to work on? Well, this is a, it's a grant that the city's applied for in the past. Uh, that sounds familiar. Years. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, it's it's a very simple grant to administer, um, but um, compared to some other ones. But the reason that we're looking at applying for it, uh, not only is it it's simple to apply for, but um, I think the last time we applied, they had money left over. They didn't have enough people that were applying for it. Okay. And the need is for um, the DNR is currently working on a study that they'll be completing in 2017. It's a study along the Wisconsin River, mm -hmm. and what they the outcome of that study will be a limit that they set for phosphorus, phosphorus. and it's going to impact all the communities along that study area along the right. river, and. Um, so what this is going to do is going to take all the um, modeling that's been done to date, and it's it's going to uh, prepare it for that um, for the for the study, you know, for the results of the study. It's going to get it up to the latest version. They're going to run through it and just get it ready. It's, it's sitting on old uh, old methodology and old software version. They're going to migrate it into the, the latest software uh, All right. version. What is the uh, source of the phosphorus here in the city, for example? Um, well, we're not supposed to be applying phosphorus fertilizers to, to lawns and stuff anymore, but um, it can, it's just natural fertilizer. One is a treatment plant. The other is just natural um, stormwater runoff degradation from leaves and grass clippings and that sort of thing that leaches out of the uh, yard waste, I guess. Okay. The lawns and 
Mm -hmm. So were you aware of this coming up for for this year, something like this? Or uh, there's no funds from the city. Well, something like this, other than well, obviously, if we get the grant, right, you know, that would fund seventy percent of it. And we also in the and this would be funded out of the stormwater utility. Okay. And in there, we do budget X amount of dollars for consultant type services. So that would be the source of the matching. And we, and we did propose it for this for this budget cycle. Now, how much are you applying for? Um, well, it's the cost is going to be somewhere between the sixty and eighty thousand dollar mark to do the analysis or the updating to the modeling. Okay. Um, they the way it's priced is based upon how many structures that you have that impound the water, so how many ponds and how many outfalls that you have in the city. Okay. You know, along the river we have quite a few outfalls. Mm -hmm. And the reason they do that is each one has to be modeled separately. Um, but sixty to eighty thousand dollars is our kind of estimate on what is what their proposal is likely gonna be from, from the from consultant. consultant. Yep. Okay. And so we would be a uh, for the grant, we would, um, you know, we could get us up to eighty-five thousand. They'll, they'll pay. They'll, they'll fund. I should say. The grant could be eighty up to eighty-five. Seventy percent up to eighty-five thousand. Okay. Is there a specific dollar amount that you put in the grant app, or is it just kind of open-ended? Sure. There might be a preliminary uh, estimate. Okay, so on, on something like this, there will be also a cost to the city, but coming out of funds designated to serve this purpose, mm -hmm. which is actually collected through taxpayers' rates on sewer and water. Right? Correct. Yeah, it's that stormwater charge. Right. That's where, that's where okay. the funding for this would come from. Okay. So same pocket, different part of the wallet, yep. something like that. <laughs> hey, all right. I move to approve the applying for the DNR's urban non-point source and stormwater management grant. Uh, Question, Jeff. Yes, sorry. Go ahead. Um, you said we got several outfalls. You're talking about the the uh, just wastewater storm sewer outfalls that come out from the different the different drainage pipes, basically, right? Yeah. I mean, okay. And so then those come from different. Different network of pipes from different neighborhoods <coughs> and things of that nature, right? Yeah. Okay, so, and you said phosphorus from things of yard clippings, waste, things of that nature. We also said fertilizer, phosphorus based fertilizers or fertilizers with phosphorus in them. Right. Um, is the, does this, this, we don't, as a city, municipality, apply fertilizers in that nature, do we? No. No. So essentially, we'd be looking at private individuals, either businesses, or citizens that are applying phosphorus-based fertilizers. Mm -hmm. So what would, what would we be doing then at that point if we acknowledge or would find that there would be phosphorus coming into those outfalls from neighborhoods? Would we be targeting, can we even get so fine and specific to target specific neighborhoods? Well, I mean, or businesses or properties and then put a ordinance on the book saying no phosphorus Fertilizer. I, I guess I'm just kind of trying it's, to play it down several lines. But it's a very good point. Um, the downside is the way that the modeling is being done and has been done. There's been other. They call them PMDLs, total maximum daily loads. The studies that the DNR has done. They've also had private consultants to them in two other, at least two other areas in the state, um, Fox River and the Rock River. Um, but they look at the entire watershed. So we're a small community in this 9,000 square mile okay. watershed and um, the phosphorus that's actually generated in the city is very minute compared to phosphorus that's actually generated in the countryside, you know, agricultural settings. Okay. So the mechanism that is being you know, employed here is that it's, it's a way to finance, you know, this watershed problem. Not necessarily a city problem. Okay. Although we're a small, very small contributor, 
dollar wise should have been the same thing. Okay. Well, and, and I guess the way it's have more money. Right. And I guess the way you know the way it's worded and it kind of maybe presented through no fault of anyone, but it just. It just looked like it was something that was targeted directly at the city, but when you say the watershed itself, so now we're talking about all the yeah. all the yeah. creeks and the backwaters that come in out of the farmland. So now that would be considered industrial usage, I would assume. Then. So, yeah. and yeah. they're and what are they doing? Are they measuring outfalls from all those locations as well, or it's um it's kind of a actual data that's collected as well as. Actual data that's collected is used to calibrate the modeling. It's, it's very, uh, I went sat through a couple meetings. It's very scientific. Um, it's well over anything that most people have to deal with, you know, in this sort of field. But um, they, so they're using out like creeks, mm -hmm. they're taking actual samples, then they're using that data to calibrate this model. Right. And then once the model's calibrated, then they can run all sorts of projections and analyses on you know, how this might work. Okay, so there, there is a method to control it to make sure that we're not, for instance, you know, municipality versus municipality, we're not being dinged for waste, phosphorus waste that would be going into the river shed system, not a Stevens Point or beer or something along those lines. So it is kind of point by point down the river as it comes in, as it enters the stream. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But of course, that what enters the stream is going to vary upon the time of the season. Oh, yeah, definitely. They've been, I think they've been collecting data yeah, for like the last four or five years. Okay. Model, so. All right. Okay. Any other questions, comments? One, yes. One thing that I would like to ask for the motion would be to apply for this grant also needs to have this the resolution approved as well. Sure. The recommendation of approved resolution. Okay. I asked you this morning if it needed to be on it. Okay. Well, if <laughs> we can all I mean, I'm not sure if you have to add the actual resolution, you know, as part of the, the agenda. I know for our public hearings that we do, uh, we don't actually have the. Okay. It's always an add on to make sure to clear the final. Okay. If, it, if it's a problem, we can always do right for council. Right. The actual resolution. So, yeah. Yeah. so again, I would um, motion to approve the applying for the DNR Urban Nonpoint Source and Stormwater Management Grant and the re resolution as presented. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Number eight is consider approval of a payment in lieu of taxes agreement with WRMSP LLC for the apartments known as Chula Vista, 1200 Huntington Avenue. Tim? I guess I'll take this one up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, is uh, previous owners Chula Vista property had a payment in lieu of tax agreement with the city, and basically what it is is that their property is tax exempt. But in recognition of city services they receive, they make a payment in lieu of taxes. And Chula Vista, for a number of years, has been paying on an annual basis $10,688 for that. Um, they have now sold this to this uh, WRM SB LLC, and they are proposing this new pilot payment agreement, payment in lieu of taxes agreement, and they're actually proposing to pay $15,000 a year. And in recognition of city services that they receive to similar type properties, um, they, they recognize that they're still subject to any special assessments down the road. Um, but also, they, it's contingent upon them. They receive rents from HUD, right. Housing and Urban Development, and those payments would never fall below. They, an agreement calls for that they would make partial payments or as much as the extent they can possible. But at a point in time, they could say, we just can't afford to make the pilot anymore. Right. And they would disagree that says that they've got it, but they don't have to make it in the first place. So mm -hmm. so it's pretty much a standard payment of taxes agreement to replace the one that we currently have for that property. All right. Questions, comments on this item? Why did they increase the dollar amount so much? It, it, it's based on the rents that they get from HUD. 
So basically, you know, rents went up, so they can pay more. Right. That's awesome. All right. So we'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> about it. it usually doesn't go that way. No. <laughs> so we're going to get less. Yeah. So, how are you doing, Terry? Keep it up. Keep it up, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Shame to give them more room. I don't have to take them <laughs> Okay, maintenance right. agreement on municipal court software. Second. Maintenance agreement on our municipal court software. I'd like to make a motion to approve a uh, payment of $15,000 in lieu of taxes agreement with WRMS LLC for the apartment known as Shula Vista, 1200 Sutton Avenue. I'll second that. Any other discussion or comment? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And this is the county act. Direct debit at this amount until our accounts. The city's accounts. Now, I know that Sue talked with me when I stopped by City Hall about the pyrotechnic agreement, and uh, she's still in discussion. HR, yep. they still are there. Yeah, they are. They still are. Okay. Yep. Let's go to item number ten then, which is the revenue of appropriation resolution, and Tim's going to address that. Okay. Us. This is an annual resolution that I do. Basically what it is, is is that when we put together the, the annual budget, there are certain revenues that we can't anticipate, whether it's through grants or donations that aren't a part of our annual budget. So these amounts come in from, like you see the first one from CNN, that was a $25,000 grant for beautification. That, right? And so basically what we're doing here is we're just appropriating that over to an expenditure account so when we expend the funds, we have a legal appropriation. And as you go through here, you'll see it's, it's mostly grants. Like the police department gets various small grants throughout the year that they apply for. Um, uh, the Mead Witter annually gives money to the uh, McMillan Library for their content series and other programs. So we're just appropriating that over. You know, um, our housing program that's that's administered through CAP services. We get in loan payments each each year as people repay those loans, and we. We loan them back out, and that's just appropriating those loan payments into the expenditure account for for future loans that we make. And then just pretty much that's it. It's just gifts and grants and, and things like that. So it's pretty standard. Right? Usually you've got the Brownsfield grant down there and some of the excess room tax that we received this year above and beyond what was appropriate in the 2014 budget. So, and I have these... These monies have been received or will end? They are received. They are received. Correct. Okay. And they were received after the first of the year or? They're received uh, throughout the year 2014. 2014. So this is just, okay. it's more of a bookkeeping exercise for our budget to mm -hmm. make sure that we have the appropriation for those okay. funds. see some already made their contributions for the Legion Park leadership project mm -hmm. some donations are yep. for that. One I didn't see on there, and I don't know, maybe this was 2013, was the uh, it got me thinking of the Lions group gave us the money for um, scenic overlay. Was that 2014? We're not, I don't know if they ever asked. I don't think we've ever someone asked me about that a couple of times. I, 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 I got a letter saying here is your donation, so maybe it was it was almost here it is, let us know if we're going to yeah. write a check toward maybe as opposed to writing that would have been our gifts and grants account. Yeah, that's why I, when I noticed some of the others, I didn't see the lions in there, but maybe that was prompted. I've got, I know I've got a note in my yeah. box that I can look into that, figure out where, where that is. Oh. Any questions on any specific ones? Uh, help me with the ambulance revenue at the bottom of the page. Oh, okay. Sure. That's a, we instituted this a number of years ago. Because as, you as you'll see in the 2015 budget, we put X amount of dollars aside in depreciation account to replace the ambulance. Right. And also kind of to help fund that account, since obviously the lifespan of an ambulance is linked to how much it's used, we also came up to, to help fund that account is that for every billable mile, that the ambulance goes out to, we put one dollar back into. So it's kind of a program where the more we use the ambulance, the more money that goes into the depreciation fund because okay. most likely we'll probably have to replace it sooner because they have a you know limited life based on mileage. So that's okay. something we've been doing about for eight years now. 
And so it's a calculation I do at the end of the year when I look at all our billable miles that we have mm -hmm. and then appropriate a dollar from the ambulance revenue account into the depreciation account. And I only do that as if we have excess ambulance revenue in excess of what was budgeted. Okay, for that. So, all right. Any, any questions on this at this time? I would move to uh, make a motion then to approve the revenue pro appropriation resolution as presented. Second. Any questions, comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. All right. Uh, go to number 11. Keeping number two and number nine set aside for the moment. But I know I'd like to see if Shill has any, uh, Attorney Shill has any additional information for us on the pyrotechnic agreement. It had been a three year and she was proposing one year because of the work at the Tribune building. All right, item number 11, beverage operator license applications. Uh, I spoke with Shane before coming into the meeting tonight. There were no licenses uh, denied, uh, no this kind of standard. So I make a motion to approve the beverage operator license applications as, as presented. Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Let's do audit of the bills at this moment then. Okay, you have the list right there. Okay. Thank you, sir. And Mayor, HR is still meeting. I just sent Sue a message indicating that um, okay. we've got a couple of items we're waiting for her attention. So when she finishes to come down, okay. I mean, she hasn't sent anything back. Okay. Do need her for probably 13 anyways if we decide to get yep. closed. Right. And, and, uh, hold that one over. I just was wondering how pyrotechnics, what they if they were agreeable to the one you Yeah, Tim, did you have any information oh. on, on their agreeability? I think when Sue and I went back and forth about part of it was I think as you indicated in in her memo, you know, there's if occupancy is restored back to the tribunal and that affects the ability to um, shoot at that location. In effect, they'd have to close on the 4th and the 3rd or modify their hours. She said you way. can handle it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, what we discussed in the three year, I would personally like to go out for bid. Not that we're unhappy with pyrotechnic, oh, okay. but at some point it, we we should probably go out for bids on it. We've had them for, what, three years? and um, No, this is our second. This will be our third year with them. So I figured we would do it. Um, one year and then come back again and do an RFP on the beginning of the following year. And then we would probably stick with a three year time frame if we're, if we're going to do it that way. Just addressing the fireworks question. And I, you know, I guess if people have opposition to going out for bids, we don't have to. It just seems that sometimes, you know, we get questions are we comfortable with a certain vendor or could we get a better sure. deal? Or are there others on the market? Uh, they were right place, right time, and, and I think they've, you know, not only is she and they were ex extremely happy, I think if they would continue to meet any conditions or demands we would put on them. We put it out to bid last time. Didn't we? Well, yeah. Well, we like no, them. no, because of the issues with who was our current provider at the time, yeah. these guys, that's why I say right place, right time, they were able to shoot the show because they go right. yeah, right. right. years in advance yep. conceivably. And I think that makes sense to go to one year and then when we. Review with, the, it. review with the new right. location or where, how we're going to do that, then you can put an RFP with the exact details. Okay. Have we started giving consideration to uh, that building being occupied and unusable as a shoot site? They Well, we built and it in that agreement that they uh, have to, this coming year, there is, there's no yeah. there's no ability for them to occupy the space on 4th of July and the day of, I think, the day before maybe. Um, so, it, it, you know, yeah, yeah, two, two days, okay. Right, yeah. Well, I'm just, so, I'm just kind of curious. Uh, right. You know, if we... <laughs> <Good point. laughs> if, if we're, but for subsequent years, we're going to have to, right? Right. Regardless well, of where we shoot it. There, whatever goes into that building, whatever comes to fruition, and, you know, that's going to be a, a draw and a meeting place for people on that day. So you don't yeah. want to force them to close that down on 
yeah. on a big day because that's going to be a, a community draw area. We did talk that on if you moved it a bit north, mm -hmm. this is just we haven't done any major right. kind of identification of issues, but we would have to close access on the bridge or you know it's all about that safety zone, right. that's the zone around the shoot site. So if we could use let's say the the um, virtual parking lot, you know, shooting provided the it's going to be sold there very soon. You know, or off the barge if there's a river site that of course moves the safety zone back. So you've got. What if what if you shot it downstream? Yeah, south, I mean, there's all of those things that are on the barge and shoot and it we would. North. That's what Sue had said we would put in the proposal was give. You know, you come to town. Here's our parameters. Tell mm -hmm. us what would work for you, mm -hmm. and yeah. then we could select. This year, the tribute building is basically construction. Right. Right. I mean, it's all the office. They got a year to figure They're not it out. Really <laughs> business. And we have a year to figure it out in that regard yeah. too. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I think that's where one year is makes sense. And then that's one of the things. That, and they indicated in their proposal, I'd like to have their, they'd like to have our uh, music, for example, by the second. Oh yeah, March. I know Sue had laughed about that. You know, too early to be thinking of Fourth of July, but it's true. Yeah, I mean, they <laughs> yeah, got to prepare the show. Summer. I'm always thinking all summer. <laughs> Well, they have to put their information together as they build the show. So, yeah, yep. and they're not doing it just for us. How many folks do they have under contract? For, and all for one day. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> okay. She said she's going to be a bit. So, um, she okay. reiterated that that Tim can handle it. <laughs> <laughs> You're on point. Right? Yeah, I guess. Uh, we'll tag team on it. We'll just work yeah. through. We'll work through. I recommend approval of the one-year contract. <laughs> 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 and, and it just makes sense until then. Mm -hmm. With the change in location next year, that that is something we'll have to do, certainly. Yeah. Uh, Tim, uh, check 584-01. Things with these guys, too, you know, they keep trying different Things in their show with yeah, uh, <laughs> Skyline Music LLC. Yeah, yeah. that's the one. Right. Um, that's the library. It's part of their con uh, it's part of their concert series. Oh, okay. So that's cool. in fact, it came from their funds. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what the I mean, winter grant. Okay. Sure. Like that. All right. How can you tell, looking at the account codes, that it's a library item? What would be the they're 55701. 55701. Mm -hmm. So if you see an item 55, you know that it's the library and it's funded from their funds. Yeah, 55701 are the, the first three numbers. 101 is the actual fund, 101 is general fund. The next two is the actual category, which 55 mm -hmm. would be recreation, okay. uh, cultural recreation. And the 55701 is the actual departmental account, which corresponds to the library. Okay. Thank you. And then the last four numbers, the actual line item. Okay. So. Does anyone have any other questions on the bills? Okay. I'd motion. I'd make a motion then to pay the bills as presented. Okay. Motion made, second. Uh, pay the bills. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. okay. And welcome. Thank you. Well, item nine. Yeah, let's go back to item nine at this time. Item nine is consider approval of a contract with Pyrotechnic Display Incorporated for the city's 2015 fireworks display. I did have a note from Attorney Schill, and I'll just read it here for the uh, for the uh, folks present. The fireworks display contract is for the same vendor we have used for the last four years. Uh, the provider is requesting a three-year contract. Uh, the city is recommending a one-year contract, and that being because of the Tribune development, we may wish or by necessity to alter somewhat the shoot zone beginning in 2016, depending on what takes place within the building and the needs of the building. So the contract may be a little different for 2016. This will be our fifth year with Pyrotechnics. 
we could use this year as an opportunity to solicit proposals from others as this finishes out with this year. And then uh, there's been no problems with the current vendor. Uh, we would, and the only other thing is that we, uh, we recommend meeting city staff is going to recommend that we change it to a one-year contract for this year to be followed up by a request for proposal for subsequent years starting in 2016. <clears throat> Question or comments? Really, the only comment is we've had a yep. discussion that we're just going to push for a one-year contract, right? So Correct. This the uh, we're going to talk about. It. Right. We'll be uh, submitting a one-year contract proposal to pyrotechnics and then afterwards uh, doing a request for proposals from other bodies if they would be interested in that contract. So I move then to approve a one-year contract with pyrotechnics display incorporated for the city's 2015 fireworks display. Second. Motion made and seconded. Is there any further discussion comments from anyone? All in favor say aye. Aye. The motion passes. Now the, I'm somewhat concerned about item two because we don't have someone to speak to it specifically. There was uh, no, no notes presented to me. Um, I didn't see one in there because yeah, it's there. And it's a renewal. I think it's it's Sue, I asked Sue about it. She didn't. She didn't know. Uh, Say again, please. It was a renewal from what what we had thought, unless it was a change of owner. Um, no, no. Which, I'm looking at two. The yep. It was the the doing business as Eco ATM. Yeah, right. I think that's just a renewal from what Sue had indicated for their application. <clears throat> But she didn't have any other information. I, I can message Shane if you don't. I don't see these are just the back Yeah, there was there was nothing in the other information presented, and uh, Shane didn't call it to my attention in any way. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to hold over. Just have a quick meeting before the council to get more information. I mean, I don't think it's or we could pass along this new recommendation to the council too. Or is it time sensitive? Well, it's, I don't know. I don't he just know. read the message. Let's see what he says. Okay. <laughs> oh, your text changed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Tim. So, in effect, when it says Eco ATM, uh, Andy, what you're saying is only a box. Yeah, it's, a, it's so, an unmanned kiosk. You just walk okay. up and you basically you, you enter in whatever type of phone that you device. have and, or device that you've got, yeah, or whatever the case may be. And it basically takes you, it's got some way to check it to verify that you are inputting what it is that you say sure. you're inputting. Yeah. But uh, it's got a secure drop location in it. So you put the device in there, drop it, and then it deposits out. You know, if it's if your iPhone is worth fifty bucks, it gives you fifty bucks. Mm -hmm. But you know, I and obviously they've got some way to verify. You know that you know you are who you say you are, or you know the device is yours and you're authorized to get rid of it or whatever. But mm -hmm. you know, it, I, these things are all it's over really the place. You know, I mean, okay. they've got them in the malls down in Appleton and in Madison and everything like that. So every they're, they're, they're all over the place. So, I mean, it's not like this is the only one of its kind. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. so he thought it was, Shane had responded, he thought it was in the stack. That is the machine in the mall that buys cell phones. Yes, okay. um, it is the kiosk, and they are a renewal. So it's a renewal, not new. Correct. Okay. See, I, since it said an application for a second-hand deal, it should be a renewal application. Renewal application yeah. would have been more correct. We can give Shane a hard time about that one. That's yeah. what he says. It was. It is a renewal. Okay. No, 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 no. I think that's uh, that's better job, right? Right. Now, no, there was nothing there that I saw. Okay, for one more time, it's not a new application. Just to make sure. Okay. It's not a new one. Okay. 
I guess if I saw it, I just, just couldn't recognize what it was. Yeah. You know? yeah it's, well, he thought it was in the stack, so I okay. didn't have any answers. <laughs> well, it, must be, it must be in your stack. I thought that's what I read at first when Shane sent the message. But I misread it. <laughs> that's the one I had a question mark. I mean, I did ask Shane about that. But it is a renewal. No. Yeah, I just looked back. Well, we here. know it's there. It's yeah. 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 It's been there for a couple of years, actually. Yeah. I wasn't sure if anybody actually used it. <laughs> so it must be. Yeah, I, I thought at first. I thought. I think it's even got on the side of it. It's got like a free cell phone charging area. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen that. I'm wondering what Does anyone else uh, have any questions about it? Any concerns about going ahead and uh, I'd make a motion then to allow renewal, the renewal application for the secondhand article dealer license filed by ECO ATM. Doing business as ECO ATM for the premises at 555 West Grand Avenue. I make a motion to that effect. I second. Motion made and second to approve that renewal uh, license application. Any other questions? Well, oh, Shane yeah. put a copy of the app or the renewal application in your box so you can review it. So if you have any issues, you should. Yeah, you so that you can yeah, take it up at that time. But, um, it has been there for a time, so it's yeah. obviously yeah. yeah it's, it's just a natural to verify uh, that renewal. Tom, any questions over there, Tom? No. Nope. Okay. All right. Our last item is to go into closed session. Okay. Uh, Tim, do you have information on this? I don't. Have Mayor, I've got a few things, and, and I do have a question, so that would be, I think, important to if we can go into closed. Like. Okay. If you're well, open to it. We can also put it before the council meeting, too, if you'd like. Give what time is it? 10 after 6? Your meeting started at 6. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tom, you had a meeting tonight. Joe's out, out there, I know. Um, yeah, let's make this, since we don't have Sue here and uh, Shane, Okay. let's make this an item, then, that will be a part of our... Uh, regular council meeting, which will be on the what, 10th? What, so you want to have a meeting before council? There is a, um, a time, somewhat of a time sensitive thing that I'd like to get some at least feelings from council members on. Mm -hmm. If you wouldn't mind going in, we don't have to spend much time in it. I just want but it's like the same to. day actually as our council meeting, the 17th, right, is when we go to right. council next. Yeah. So you'd like if to, you wouldn't mind yeah. to meet before council. Well, no, it's that morning of. So I, I think. Either, can discuss. either tonight or it's different day. Or a different day before okay. that, Tuesday. Yeah. Well, then let's let's go into the close then to That'd meet the mayor's helpful. concerns. That'd be um, <laughs> we'll see you again. <laughs> All right. Take care. Thank you for coming. At this time, the, in open session, the committee may vote to go into closed session under Section 19.85, Parent 1, Parent E of the Wisconsin Statute, which reads, deliberating or negotiating the purchasing of public.